yes, there will be baseball. After a 99-day lockout, we now have a complete 162-game schedule starting with opening day on April 7th. To celebrate the return of baseball, we want to do a wow promotion, so here we go. The first 50 customers will get the full season of MLB, including the playoffs, for just over $3 per day. How much of a wow is this? MLB through the All-Star break is priced at $7.95 and through the World Series is priced at $1,095. But the first 50 customers can get MLB through the World Series for $6.99. No coupon is needed and this comes out to just over $3 per day. Once we hit 50 redemptions, the super early bird discount will come down and the lowest possible price to lock in baseball will no longer be available. So act fast before you get shut out on our biggest price drop ever. Hello, guys, and welcome back to Wager Talk TV. You're watching Puck Time, and I'm Andrew McGinnis. I'm joined by Brian Leonard. We'll have Carmine back, I believe, on tomorrow's show. Uh, but let's break down four games today. Today's games, we have Tampa Bay and Boston, the Dallas Stars and the Hurricanes, the Sharks and the Oilers, and our late game, the Nashville Predators and the Vegas Golden Knights, a game I believe, Brian, you will be at uh, tonight uh, with Carmine and a few other people as well. Uh, which should be a pretty good game in Sin City. Uh, but usually we talk about promotional stuff at the end, but I want to ask you right now with some Sweet 16 stuff going on with a bigger NHL slate, with some NBA going on, uh, Howard's night last night, I believe you said you were passing, so hopefully you're able to get some rest. And, and what's going on for you tonight at wagertalk.com? Yeah, I ended up passing yesterday. Nothing strong enough to release. Uh, I do have five plays up. On today's card, I got two AHL, two uh, both the NCAA Big Dance tournament games today. I've got the totals in both of those. Then I have my top uh, NBA play I've had in a while up today. So we've got five plays up, uh, and I've normally it's thirty nine dollars for the full day. I've dropped that to twenty nine dollars in an all access package today. And and you may have noticed that I'm wearing a Vancouver uh, hockey jersey today. And I like to thank one of the guys in the chat room, Rich Hesketh. Uh, he said, if I, if I sent you one, would you wear it? And I said, hell yeah, I'd wear it. And, I, and then the, the, uh, they sent it to Detroit. I picked it up at the uh, get together last weekend and, uh, a lot of people wanted it, but I was the one to walk away with it and it actually fits me. I appreciate it, Rich. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, an older version of the Vancouver uh, Jersey, but it's really cool. And, uh, so now I've got somebody to root for other than, uh, my fading golden Knights. <laughs> well, that's really, really nice. And uh, we talked yesterday, and I think I heard you and Car mention it the day before as well, with just uh, how great our viewership is and how nice it is to, uh, you know, put a face to some of these names. So here you go. You you can say it like this. You have an American team now. You have a team north of the border, Brian. You've got a couple different jerseys now, so it's great to see. Uh, for me as well, just I've got a 4% play up uh, in Sweet 16 action for tonight. Also have a free play up at my web at my page. And you can go to the Wager Talk free picks page as well and grab that. Uh, also have a UFC uh, free pick up and uh, a five pack up. One 4% play and then a few 2% uh, two, 2 plays and 1% plays as well, Brian. So looking forward to this weekend and uh, a lot more uh, in action, I guess you could say, tonight and tomorrow than I was yesterday. Uh, my best bet on the show, Cash, yesterday I did have the Blackhawks and the money line. Um, but with the clients, I actually ended up going a lot safer. Uh, I took the team total over two and a half. We were at two goals with about eight minutes to go. Uh, the game finished 4-2, so happy to get there with that one, and we'll try and cash some best bets again on the show for today. But uh, our first game we're going to talk about here, Brian, it's a really, really good one here. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Boston Bruins. This one's a pick em here, minus 110 apiece. Total's five and a half here. If you do want the puck line right now for the Bruins at home, you can get that minus one and a half plus 225. Uh, we obviously have the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're off a loss to the Carolina Hurricanes here. Uh, Boston Bruins are at home now at TD Garden. What are your thoughts here on this one, Brian? Yeah, Tampa Bay actually off two losses. Uh, they lose at home to the Rangers two to one last weekend also. So you got a team coming off a couple losses. Normally, Tampa Bay is a great team when they're coming off losses. But I think this year, since they've been through uh, the playoffs so well the last few years, I don't think it means as much to the regular season. And we made good money going against them here. Uh, they had two days off before they played uh, Carolina. 
and then they had yesterday off. So this is a team that's pretty rested. But I think there's slight value here on Boston. Uh, once again, I always take a look at all the travel situations. This team's been traveling all the way since the 4th of this, uh, this month. They played at home against Detroit, and then they went to Chicago, uh, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle. Went home for the one game against the Rangers. Um, and then, uh, you know, back to Carolina, Boston. And then they got Detroit and the Islanders coming up. So this is a team that's getting plenty of road miles on their uh, their their flight cards. But uh, I, I think Boston's in a little bit better position here. You do have Boston, and I've got to admit, but this is their first game home off a road trip, which is normally something that I, I tend to uh, not, not want to play on those teams. But it was successful. <clears throat> excuse me, successful road trip. The only loss was at Minnesota, a team who now looks to be a real contender out west, I believe. Uh, but they got the last two days off to play in Tampa here. I like Boston. Um, if on this on this card, that's probably one of my better plays. At minus one ten, but it should be an exciting game. It probably could be the best game on the board tonight. Yeah, you'd think it, it would be. Um, two great teams in the Eastern Conference right now. And like you mentioned, yeah, not just one loss, but two losses uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning in a row. And, well, Brian, I guess it took only one game for us to be on opposite sides in, in, in this show. But it's going to happen. Uh, and for a lot of the reasons, honestly, you mentioned, you know, and I understand it's not really the case every time. Uh, traveling doesn't always mean fade. But I always say it's not about coming off a road trip. It's more so about coming off a successful one, like you, like you kind of described there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I also look at it like this, as much as I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan, you know, I love my Canadians and, and, and I think that, you know, they're playing better these days. Um, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning are no Montreal Canadiens. They are no Winnipeg Jets. It is a different set of competition tonight, uh, than what Boston's faced in their last couple games here. Now they're at home and well, you don't want to play Tampa Bay. Like you just mentioned when, when they're off a loss, well, how about two losses here? And as much as Boston's played well recently and, you know, stepped it up, what is it, seven and three last 10? I mean, they're, they're still not, I don't think, on Tampa's level here. And so I think this is a game that Tampa gets up to. They've won seven straight games in Boston at the Garden. Um, so I was kind of surprised by this price. And, and Brian, quite often I, I've, uh, I've definitely taken it very serious when you've said, you know, this game is mispriced, that game is steeper. Um, I definitely trust, you know, you know your uh, line reading capability here. Did you agree with this being a, a pick em price, whether or not you're on, uh, you know, Boston or Tampa? Did you think this this price was what it, what it would be? Yeah, I thought it'd be Boston minus 120. Um, okay. So I was a little bit surprised. It, it's not a major difference, but it's still something that I, I thought. It, if it wouldn't have been the first game back, I think it would have been 120. Uh, but uh, you take the line they give you, and you got to make your decision off of that. So, yeah, I, I agree. I, I could see this going either way. It's not it's not a huge uh, decision for me either way. I just think uh, the line's ten cents cheap. Well, like you said, it should be a very good one, and it also could be a good live betting game. So we'll see what happens in this one. Uh, but our next game we're going to discuss a little bit different. I think uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Dallas Stars going head to head. This one, Brian, well, it's not really a pick em here. Uh, we've got one team. They're minus 195. Uh, that is Carolina. Dallas plus 165 uh, on the highway here. Totals five and a half. And taking a look at Dallas, well, they've won two straight games, defeating Washington and Edmonton. As far as Carolina goes, um, they beat uh, the aforementioned Tampa Bay Lightning we just discussed. But prior to that, it was four straight losses for them against Pittsburgh, Toronto, Washington, and New York. And one thing I'll say about this Carolina team right now, Brian, is that uh, the, the, the expression battle test is definitely applicable to them. They've definitely played some tough competition recently. Uh, obviously, Dallas are no slouch either, um, but Carolina certainly played some c- tough competition. You know, New York and Pittsburgh and, and all those teams. Um, how do you approach this game here for Carolina at home as minus 195 favorites? Yeah, I'm going to continue to fade Dallas. Um, they have not played back-to-back games at home since February 13th. Uh, they're on this road trip. They did play it. Uh, they were back home for the last game um, against the Oilers, and they, and they beat the Oilers 5-3. to three. Now they're back on the road. Then they got to come back home and play Vancouver 
this weekend, and they're back on the road again for back-to-back games against Anaheim. Uh, so that'll be actually the first one well, on the 31st of this month. That'll be the first time that they've played in the same building since February 13th. So this is a team that's getting plenty of miles on them. Uh, they're coming off that win against Edmonton. And uh, I, I think it's a good spot for Carolina here. Uh, Carolina was a team that uh, struggled for a little while there, but now they're back uh, on this home homestand, uh, four-game homestand. They lost the first two. Um, they lost to or excuse me, they lost to Washington in a shootout on the 18th, and then they lost to the Rangers two to nothing. So uh, it's a situation for them where they, they come back and get that win against or excuse me, Tampa Bay uh, just a couple days ago. Puts them back in the positive here, and I think they build on that here before they go on this road trip. They go to St. Louis, Washington, and Tampa, all three games in a four-day span. So this is an important game for them uh, against Dallas. If they don't win this game, you know, St. Louis is a very good team. Washington, we've seen this, can be up and down this year, but uh, right now they're playing pretty well, and then Tampa Bay revenge. So this is really, it's, you can, it's hard to say, a must-win situation. It's an important game for Carolina here, a very important game. Or I think it's less important for Dallas, although Dallas is trying to move up in the playoff rankings. So, uh, but I think the line is fair here. I like Carolina. Um, I, I'm laying it with the uh, with the host in this one. Brian, when I when I say the word inconsistent, I, I'd say that really well describes this Dallas Stars team. Would you agree? I mean, they lose as big favorites sometimes. They cash as big dogs sometimes. And to me, I just don't I don't know what to expect with this team. Sometimes, are you with me on that? I do. Uh, we talked earlier this season about how well they were playing at home and how bad they were playing on the road. And I said, well, that's just not going to continue. So we were able to make some money on playing on Dallas on the road and fading them at home. So that's worked out pretty well. But yeah, it's been one of those years for Dallas. They've looked really good. They've looked really bad. But if you go back the last few years, uh, they've been very similar to that. Uh, it's a team that is built for the playoffs. And once they get to the playoffs, they're dangerous. And they were very dangerous in the playoffs the last few years. So um Dallas just wants to get in the playoffs it's very similar to what Tampa Bay is doing right now just get to the playoffs and you've got that veteran leadership you've been there before uh, you've got confidence when you get to the postseason so they just want to get there and once they get there that's when they're going to be at their best so that's something to keep in mind in these regular season games when you have certain teams like a lot of teams haven't been in the playoffs in a long time and they just want to get to the playoffs that's very important to them if they play a team that's uh, been to the playoffs and doesn't really need the game as much that's where you can get some nice underdog money. So, uh, yeah, good, good points about Dallas. I agree. Yeah, just looking at the way they're priced by the odds makers, it, it seems like they can't really figure them out either. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, one minute they're minus 120, the next night they're minus 190 against the team. Uh, on top of Carolina, I, I do like them as well, just like you do. I also have a lean to the over five and a half here. You know, it's gone over seven the last 10 games for the Dallas Stars. And, um, like I mentioned, uh, it, it's nothing really for me against the Dallas Stars. I guess I'm kind of lower on them than a lot of people are. But I mentioned that, um, you know, the, uh, the the games that we've seen Carolina play recently and uh, how battle tested they are against top tier teams. And I honestly just don't put Dallas in that category with some of those teams that we've seen Carolina face. And sometimes I think that when you when that happens, um, I, I, I don't really like using these cliche terms like let down and stuff, but. I feel like we could see that after just so many dangerous games, after a huge game against Tampa Bay, like Carolina's coming off of. So I could see them allowing some goals to Dallas, but I could also see uh, Dallas continuing to uh, allow goals as well as we saw them coming off that 5-3 game uh, against Edmonton. And I'd say Carolina's the much deeper team than Edmonton, so they'll be able to score as well. And what's great about this one is we're only seeing a 5.5 here, uh, and I love those 5.5 totals, you know, as we – as we found out last night, um, you know, in that Leafs and Devils game, and the six and a halfs and sevens, they're hard to get to sometimes. Uh, so having a five and a half here in this Carolina game, obviously it's a five and a half for a reason, uh, but I like the over here in this one. So uh, jumping on that, and uh, Brian and I both liking the home team in this one, the Carolina Hurricanes. Now let's talk about the San Jose Sharks and the Edmonton Oilers, a team that I was just discussing there for just a second. Uh, but they're minus 245 at home in this one. The total is at six here. San Jose plus 195. Uh, or, and, and you look at this one here. I mean, Edmonton, I talk about inconsistent. I mean, Edmonton is a team that's hard to figure out as well. 
Um, I feel like since I've been a part of Wager Talk, Brian, and I've been doing hockey content, all I've talked about is uh, Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid needing help with their scoring abilities. And it goes to show that sometimes you don't need to have that all-star, the best player in the world, to be the best team. And that's kind of the case right now with the Oilers. And it's, it's kind of what the case has been for them uh, for quite some time now. Taking a look at the expected goalies here. Um, I'm looking at Koskinen and potentially James Reimer for tonight in this matchup. But what, what are your thoughts here? I, I like Edmonton. Um, I'm look, looking at the puck line in this one. I just think San Jose is so sloppy defensively. And Edmonton isn't really playing too bad of hockey. They're just playing against you know better opponents. And those teams are shutting them down. And I think that when you look at how um, when you look at how Edmonton played in their last game, you move it towards this one. If they played that same game against San Jose as they played against Dallas, I think they come out on top, you know, and I think that that effort that they put forwards, you can't really be too disappointed with that besides a little bit of defensive mistakes. Um, and I think even if they make those tonight, San Jose won't be able to capitalize the same way Dallas did. So um, I'm going to look towards Edmonton and kind of a rare puck line play for me. I'm usually a, regulation guy or something like that but uh puck line for me minus one and a half for the oilers bro yeah i i think the lines priced me out a little bit you do have san jose off back-to-back -back wins and the in the win over calgary was a shocker uh i had the other side in that game uh thought we were looking pretty good at three and two next time i looked they scored i went two goals in 18 seconds 30 seconds something like that and so that was a shocker if it was a shocker for me it was probably a shocker for them even though they were on the ice uh, but now they got to go to Edmonton here. And uh, you got an Edmonton team who's won five straight games at home. They went on the road and lost back-to-back -back at Colorado in overtime and, and at Dallas. So now they're coming back home. So the spot clearly is for Edmonton here. You would expect Edmonton to play well in this one. Uh, they do have Calgary on deck, so this is a very important game for them. But as I said, I, th I think I'm a little bit priced out of here. Um, Edmonton's a team that... When they should win, uh, they've done a pretty good job lately doing it. Problem is, if you watch them all, all over the entire season, there's been many games in which they should have won and they've come, come up short. So I don't trust them enough to lay the number. I'm not a big guy on laying you know, one and a half goals. So I'm going to root for you on this one, but I'll be sending it out myself. Yeah, and you talk about being priced out, and, and even for me on the puck line at plus 105, it's not really a great price. It's not really something I want. Uh, to jump all over by any means. Um, but you talk about that San Jose team being off two wins, and it, it sounds weird to say this, Brian, but sometimes when I have a situation like this, it's almost a good thing for me that San Jose is off two wins. Does that make sense? I mean, sometimes I almost like it when teams like them are off two wins because I just really know they aren't capable of putting three or four together. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense, especially after they're off a big upset win like that. Um, you've got to think when they're uh, they're about to play Calgary and and uh, in Edmonton, they're probably thinking to themselves, okay, if we can split these two, and this is one of the things I look at in baseball a lot of times because you have game series, you got three, four, five game series, and if you've got a team that comes in and they're an underdog in that series, all of a sudden they win the first two games, it's a free ride for them. Um, so it, it, it's something that we can take advantage of, and I think that's the situation that that uh, the Sharks are in tonight. So I fully agree with you in that regard. So I was talking with you and, and uh, Carm. Uh, we were outside T-Mobile Arena uh, when the Florida Panthers were in town uh, taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. We were all at that game. And uh, I, I talked with you about, you know, the funny feeling of having action when you're at a game. And, uh, you know, I, I told my buddies, hey, I like the over in this game. I had the over. I had the first period over. We're cheering on goals, goals, goals. And it was hilarious because my friends and I, we were both cheering on both teams, you know. So I've got diehard Vegas fans next to me, diehard Vegas fans, you know, the row below me. And then there were guys like three rows down, a little bit over. And I, I swear they could tell by the way I was cheering, Brian, they knew I had the over. They could just tell. And it was such an I'm in Vegas moment. Because when it when it when the when the game landed on six and we had the push, this guy looks at me and just goes, "You're on the over, aren't you?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're on the over." And and he need, we needed one more goal. Uh, it was so funny. And so I, we're, you're going to the game tonight. So our next game we're going to talk about here: the Predators and the Golden Knights. Here, 
so I wanted to ask you, number one, uh, how often it seems that you end up having action on these games. And uh, if you find it funny and a different experience at games when you have a bet on them or if it's just another regular game for you. Uh, and what are your thoughts here in this one? Nashville, they're minus 115 on the road. Vegas, minus 105. Um, and, you know, you called, uh, I think you called it a team schedule the other day, Murderer's Row. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we have Vegas right now. They're living in a place called Cap Hell because they are not living in a cap-friendly world. Uh, they have no space right now in their cap. They've got several guys on the LTIR. And they're potentially going to miss the playoffs. Every single game for this team is huge at this point, especially against divisional teams. What are your thoughts here? Can they get it done? It's interesting you brought that up uh, with the Vegas crowds. That's the first thing I noticed when I moved to Las Vegas. Uh, originally from Cleveland, I've been betting for 45 years now. So I would go to a game in Cleveland. And if the game was around, like you go to Cavaliers game, and if the game was right around the point spread, and if they covered the point spread, you would rarely hear a ripple out of the fans uh, because of the shots. You come to Vegas, no matter what game you go to, as soon as the team covers the spread, you hear a big cheer coming out of the out of the building. So it, it's it's something that is totally different here in Vegas. Everybody seems to be aware of what the, uh, the line is on the game. And a uh, quick little story, back when I did live in Cleveland, uh, the Raiders were playing I believe Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday Night Football. This is back when they were in Oakland. And we had, you know, I kept on my buddy. We had the uh, a couple of hats. We had the Raiders hat and we had the Eagles hat. And we had the plays on the Raiders and the over. So the entire game, I'm wearing my Raiders hat, rooting for the Raiders, rooting for the Raiders. All of a sudden, I was going to lose the Raiders, but I had the over. Philadelphia gets the ball late in the game. I grabbed the Philadelphia hat, put it on my head, and everybody's looking at me, what the hell's wrong with you? I says, I bet the over. I need a touchdown here, man. <laughs> so uh, it, it's interesting. The crowds between the, the regular cities and Vegas, it's, it's totally different. But, yeah, I, I'm excited for this game. It's going tonight. And hopefully we get to meet some of uh, Carbide's friends from Canada. If everybody I met from Canada out here, including yourself, has been really nice. You and your buddies, I enjoyed that. So looking forward to this game tonight. But you're right. Uh, the Dadunov trade uh, coming back, and how is that going to be affected? Um, it, it's, it's a strange situation, and, and because of what they have done, I mean, there's a lot of people that just hate hate the uh, Golden Knights because they grab every star player. It reminds me when I was a kid with the with uh, George Steinbrenner and the Yankees. Now it's that way with the, uh, the LA Dodgers. It's they're making themselves into the enemy. And tonight we got Nashville comes in here, and Nashville's a team, a quality team. Uh, but Vegas is coming into this one. They, you take a look at this Vegas schedule. I mean, they've really struggled, but look at what they've done at home so far in this month. They've played five games at home. They've won four out of those five games. They've just been getting crushed on the road. I thought they played better the last two games out against Minnesota and uh, Winnipeg. They didn't. So you're getting a team playing at home, which they've played a lot better at this month than past months because it's been one of those seasons where normally they dominate at home. They hadn't been that way this year. But they're off of back-to-back -back games on the road in which they were shut out. Now they're home against Nashville. And they're home against Chicago on Saturday, um, unfortunately. Got those tickets, and Marc-Andre Fleury won't be there, so that doesn't help me at all. But uh, it's a situation tonight where I think Vegas really comes out to play. Uh, but they just haven't got enough offense. We talked about this the other day. They're really having problems scoring. Um, back to back shutouts to tell, tell you that. But uh, I think the first period in this game, and I used first period when they played Florida the other day. I thought it was a somewhat of a letdown situation for Florida. Florida scores the first goal. Vegas comes back, ties it up. Uh, if, if, you let, if you got them on the money line, you broke even. If you took the half a goal, you won. So that's what I'm looking to do again tonight. I think uh, with the line of minus 110 on uh, Vegas in the first period, I think that's probably the way to go. And then hopefully Vegas takes a one nothing lead here and we can make some money on playing Nashville as the underdog and get a nice payback the rest of the way through. But that's why I'm looking at this one. I've, I've lost a lot of confidence in the Knights, but I do think they come out in the first period today and give a good shot. So that's why I'm going to take a look at this one. All right, another first period play. Uh, always uh, interesting to look at these first period angles, Brian. Uh, it's funny you mentioned a first period play because that's what I was going to mention for this game as well. 
and it was going to be another first period over here. I think it's a generous price at minus 130, 135 here. Uh, just both teams, not just the Knights, both teams uh, seem to have slow starts. It's it's kind of like a boxer that needs to get hit a few times to wake up and get into the fight. That's what it feels like for both these teams. They both need to get hit and punched a couple times in order for them to wake up. And, uh, you know, you saw it. We were both at that game against Florida. I mean, when I saw it in person, I realized, man, uh, if it wasn't for some good saves there uh, from Vegas, I mean, that game could have been open early. Um, you know, and, and I think both teams actually give up goals in the first period quite a bit here. And getting minus 130, 135 on a one and a half with two teams like this when the full game is six, I'd say that's a pretty good number here. And uh, as much as I think both teams want to play a better defensive game, it's one of those things where what they want to happen and what will happen, I think, are two different things. Uh, and that's kind of what I've started to think about the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, um, all these quotes I've read from the coaching staff and the leaders in the team. Well, you know, I, I could give you a quote too, Brian, that I want to be 100% of my bets in the March Madness tournament, but unfortunately I'm not going to do that. Um, so, you know, I think Pete DeBoer's quotes are, are all great, but I don't know if they can they can actually uh, go out and do it, I guess, with those. But uh, I, I want to say it reminded me when you were talking about, uh, you know, being a fan and betting and stuff like that. I'd love to be at one of those bars with Marco when he wears like his like – you know, Pittsburgh hat and Vegas jersey or, uh, you know, whatever he's betting on and that cheering for whoever he's betting on and then Steelers jersey. I think there was a game he had a 5% pick where he faded the Steelers and then he went to a bar with the Steelers jersey on or something like that. So uh, money comes first, of course, but he had to wear the jersey to, to show his support. So I guess it's kind of a win-win in that scenario. Uh, for me this year, it's been kind of the overs, you know, with uh, the Montreal Canadiens. I've always said like, hey, well, you know, if they lose this game, it's, the over's probably going to cash. So <laughs> I took a lot of overs in Montreal Canadian games, and they've done pretty well for me. Uh, so at least if they get blown out, you know, 6-2, at least, at least the over cashes. And it's, it's, it's not as disappointing to watch, but it's still kind of rough to watch. But you mentioned earlier in the show, you do have five plays you mentioned, Brian. Uh, it's going to be a super exciting night. Uh, it feels like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is just the calm before the storm. March Madness is back, and I'll tell you what, we've had this debate. I've had this debate for all the days I was in Vegas. I think it's kind of an East Coaster versus West Coaster battle, but I'm very happy to have games back on at 7, 8, and 9 o'clock. Uh, I am not not uh, jealous of the 4 o'clock starts or even the 9 a.m. starts on the West Coast on the weekend. Uh, looking forward to having March Madness back. Looking forward to having a bigger slate tonight in the NHL. Um, what, what, just remind us at home, what you have up, what they can grab from you. And I encourage people to grab a three day pass from you, Brian, because it sounds like you're going to have a lot more action, uh, over the next couple of days. Yeah. I've already got two plays up in tomorrow that I'll be putting up as soon as the show's over in the NCAA tournament, two sides. So today I've got two totals in the big dance. I've got two plays up in the NHL. I got one play up in the NBA and, and, uh, yeah, passed yesterday, but I really like this card today. Um, I'll uh, I'll take it right into my best bet here, and we we just touched on it a little bit, uh, and that's the first period here for the Vegas Knights. Uh, I talked about the situation with them losing back-to-back uh, -to -back games, being shut out in those two games. It's very important for them to get off to a, a nice start in this one. And uh, Nashville, this you know I didn't mention it earlier, but this is the third game in four nights for Nashville. You talked about a team that wants to turn around, you know, their defensive uh, problems. When well, you take a look at what Nashville's done the last four games, they've given up five goals to Philadelphia, three to Toronto, uh, three to Anaheim, and then six to the Kings. So their defense is struggling right now, third game in four days. They've got the next two days off before they come back home to play Philadelphia and Ottawa. So that's a time for them to possibly get a practice day in and work on that defense there. But I think the, the Knights come out in the first period tonight, and it makes a lot of sense to play the over in this first period also. Uh, minus 135 is... Pretty cheap in that regard. So, yeah, I could see this game. Uh, the Knights win in this first period, two to nothing, two to one, and I think we'd both be very happy in that regard. Yeah, that would work out really well for both of us, uh, Brian, on the Vegas Golden Knights first period money line play at a nice minus one ten price. Awesome stuff there, Brian Leonard. WagerTalk.com. Five picks tonight. Find them over there. Buy a day pass. Buy a three day pass. Don't worry about buying just one play. Uh, I, I'm not saying that. Uh, to try and get anybody to buy more. I'm actually trying to save you guys money. 
um, by recommending the three-day pass. That is the best package at Wager Talk available. I always try and tell people that financially and, and just pick-wise, I think the three-day and the seven-day is the two best uh, packages to really grab uh, instead of buying just you know one day or uh, the one pick. So uh, for me, like I mentioned, I've got one 4% play up in college basketball for tonight. I have a free play you can grab at the Wager Talk page as well. UFC plays going up this afternoon for the weekend. I already have a free play up in UFC as well um, at wagertalk.com and the free sports picks page. So looking forward to a really exciting next couple of days. Uh, that's for sure. Um, in both hockey, March Madness, NBA, all of the above. Um, really looking forward to the next couple of days here. My best bet, we discussed it earlier in the show, guys. I'm looking at Edmonton, the Oilers here, minus one and a half. Rare puck line play for me, plus 105 here. Taking on the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks are off two straight wins. And, you know, I think that's almost a good thing. Like I mentioned earlier in the show, I mean, the Sharks, a uh, big upset win over the Flames. But I don't think they're capable of doing what they did uh, once again here against Edmonton here as they uh, continue their battle of Alberta. A little stretch here. It's the Alberta double, as Karim likes to call it. Um, and uh, I don't know if they can play the same against the Edmonton team. That's actually been a lot more dangerous recently. Despite two losses, I believe after before those two losses, it was four or five straight wins for the Oilers. We're starting to see a lot more scoring help uh, on that team, and the defense is playing much better. So uh, I think it's kind of a rough spot here. Uh, for San Jose, I don't like the money line numbers, so I will go with the puck line here on Edmonton, minus one and a half. So uh, I have the Oilers on the puck line and Brian Leonard playing Vegas in the first period on the money line, uh, minus 110. I want to wish Brian... A great time with Carm at the game tonight. I hope they enjoy it and have a blast. Uh, I'll tell you what, I had a great time. I'll, those uh, those beer prices, though, I didn't really have a great time buying those. Uh, but it's, it's all in good fun, and we cash some tickets when we're at that game. So uh, best of luck to all of you guys out there. Thank you for joining us, as always, and we will see you tomorrow. Yes, there will be baseball. After a 99-day lockout, we now have a complete 162-game schedule starting with opening day on April 7th. To celebrate the return of baseball, we want to do a WOW promotion, so here we go. The first 50 customers will get the full season of MLB, including the playoffs, for just over $3 per day. How much of a WOW is this? MLB through the All-Star break is priced at $7.95 and through the World Series is priced at $1,095. But the first 50 customers can get MLB through the World Series for $6.99. No coupon is needed, and this comes out to just over $3 per day. Once we hit 50 redemptions, the super early bird discount will come down, and the lowest possible price to lock in baseball will no longer be available. So act fast before you get shut out on our biggest price drop ever.